A portion of this video is sponsored by Rocket Money. You will hear more about them later. Recently, I reviewed the Retroid Pocket 4 Pro. I like Retroid for how easy their devices are to set up, but I feel like this one wasn't as simple to set up as their previous releases. I also like Android as an emulation platform, but it's been starting to fall behind some other OSs recently because it doesn't have support for EmuDeck. And I expressed in that video that I wish EmuDeck was on Android. I'm just waiting very impatiently for the day that EmuDeck finally launches on Android. Until then, I'll just have to do the damn launcher setup myself. Well, maybe my prayers have been answered. EmuDeck is a one-click emulation solution that first dropped on the Steam Deck, hence the name. It's what makes the Steam Deck one of the best options for emulation. Usually you have to install a program for each system you want to play and then set them all up one at a time. With EmuDeck, all you have to do is run a script and EmuDeck installs everything for you. It makes it easy to recommend the Steam Deck to emulation novices. You don't have to know which version of Citra will run best on your device. You don't have to know what Citra even is. It just gives you the good one and just runs it behind a nice, neat little launcher. Well, recently the people working on EmuDeck opened it up to a lot more platforms. It's now on Windows, which has made a lot of projects a lot easier for me. This past week, they announced Android support in early access. I got very excited. I ripped through a lot of Android devices because they just keep releasing new ones, and this will make setting those up a lot easier for me. My reviews almost always include the stock experience of the setup process. Now, theoretically, with the touch of a button, all of these devices can be instantly set up perfectly for emulation. Well, I jumped the gun a little bit. This is still very much in early access. It's very much just a glimpse of what's to come. The future looks good, but they're still a bit away from the one-click future we'd like to see. It's still a good tool to use right now if you know what you're doing, and I'm sure that most of you watching this already do know what you're doing. Just consider this a look into some QA testing. I'm sure they're watching and taking notes. This video is sponsored by Rocket Money. Hey Bob, what you doing? Oh, just budgeting my expenses for the week. Don't you have an app for that? Well, like on my phone? I've had one of those since YouTube put a whole album on there. Look, it's easy. I got all my food expenses. Did I wash these? All right, well, I use Rocket Money. It's way easier than whatever you're doing. I didn't wash these. Rocket Money is a personal finance app that allows you to manage subscriptions, lower bills, make a custom budget, and grow your savings all in one place. It can help you safely and securely identify recurring charges and cancels unwanted subscriptions for you. You can even cancel from within the app with just a couple of taps. No need to worry about customer service calls. Why do I need that? I got all my subscriptions right here in this pocket. I mean, I mean this pocket. Wait. Simply by uploading a photo of your bill and tapping a few buttons, Rocket Money will negotiate your bills for you from internet service to cable and phone bills. I actually did this. I didn't even have to upload a picture of my bill or anything. I just went on the app, tapped a couple of buttons, and then Rocket Money legitimately negotiated around $100 off of my internet bill. And you can try this for yourself for free over at rocketmoney.com slash wolfden or click the link in the description below. And you can unlock a lot more features with premium too. This one says, don't forget to pick up Medicaid. It's not for me, it's for my dog. Oh no! Oh, Ooh, he stinks. Look, some of the logos are missing in this theme that I have here. EmuDeck is a free download, but this is the early access Android version, which is not free. It's locked behind their Patreon, which is a minimum of $3.50 a month for the tier that gets you the early access build. So essentially you could just pay the $3.50 for one month and then get rid of it. This requires a Windows PC in order to work. You actually download the Windows version of EmuDeck and then you link that to your Patreon and if it detects that you have the right tier, it will give you the option to install Android onto a connected device. The EmuDeck Windows app has gotten pretty cool since the last time I opened it. Now there's a storefront of homebrew apps that you can download straight into your emulation library. I do not have EmuDeck on my desktop PC because I don't need like a full screen pretty emulation UI on there. I do have it on my Lenovo Legion Go though. So I connected my Retroid Pocket 4 Pro to my Lenovo Legion Go. 
And that's how I installed EmuDeck onto my Android device. I wanna jump in here and add a couple of things. This was tested on the Retroid Pocket 2S, the 3 Plus, uh, one of the Galaxy devices, and the Odin Pro, the original. I did most of my testing on the Retroid Pocket 4 Pro, which might be a little unfair because they didn't test it on that, but that should be close enough to the Retroid Pocket 3 Plus, so it should be fine. That's just the one I wanted, and I was most excited to use it on. I also saw other people tried it out on the uh, Logitech G Cloud, so I did a little bit on there too. As I'm recording this, they just launched Emulation Station for Android. I like Emulation Station a lot. I even say it in this video. So I think that there's potential that they move away from Pegasus and over to Emulation Station, which would be fine. That would be fine by me. I didn't do a clean wipe of my Retroid because I just didn't want to deal with all of that, but I did delete all of the emulation apps that I had put on here previously. I also wanted to keep all the ROMs on here. I had to move them all to different folders, but it's a lot easier to transfer files from device to the same device than it would be from another device to this thing. That process ends up being pretty slow. EmuDeck will tell you that you have to enable developer options and debugging and file transfer on your Android device. It's very easy to do. They even have a little video tutorial right there on the page. Their whole shtick is a simplified user experience and that's why I like EmuDeck. After doing all of this, I had to restart EmuDeck. Then my Android drive showed up. It took a bit of time, enough time for me to boil an egg. There are a decent amount of prompts that come up, but it walks you through what you have to do. It asks if you want bezels on the sides of your screen. It makes you configure Yuzu a little bit. When it was all done, it said it was done, but it didn't feel like it was done. So I just ran the setup again. This time, it wanted me to do a lot of stuff within RetroArch that it didn't ask me to do before. It made me redirect its BIOS and save folders. It's starting to get a little complex. After the installation is complete, it says you need to go into RetroArch, go to Load Core, then Install or Reinstall Core, and click on each one, one at a time, which kicks you out every time. It's very annoying. It's easier to just download all of the cores yourself because that menu doesn't kick you out. I feel like this would be extremely confusing for somebody who is an emulation novice. I'm sure that the final version will have a fix for this in some way. I don't think that downloading all of the cores myself is gonna break anything. I ended up downloading multiple cores from all the different systems just to make sure that I had all of the right ones. EmuDeck also created a new ROM directory, so I had to move all of my ROMs there. Once again, when it's done, it just kind of says installation complete and leaves you hanging. Pegasus is the app that will be your new front end. Pegasus is a front end UI that lays out all of your ROMs nice and neat and pretty and makes it easy to launch your ROMs into the right emulator. Except that mine was ugly and it didn't have any games in it. Apparently some devices will just have the wrong directory set. This is an issue that they know about and I think they have already fixed for the next build that's coming out. I had to manually direct Pegasus to each system's ROM directory, one at a time. And, and that was very annoying too. And then you're left with a really ugly front end. This isn't any better than the one that I had on my Retroid originally. This is just the basic bitch Pegasus theme. Pegasus themes are really easy to download though. There's a whole web page full of them. And you just put them in this directory here. You might have to make the themes folder like I did. And once they're extracted and in there, they show right up within Pegasus. There's this really cool modern one that I think might be a little bit much. There's these Nintendo Switch looking ones. There's one that looks exactly like the one that comes with the Retroid Pocket. But I just really like the emulation station looking themes. It would be nice if future EmuDeck builds just downloaded and installed a couple of these themes for you because the default one just ain't it. You might also notice that there's just no artwork on any of this stuff. That doesn't bother me that much. I usually just like the list view on some of these themes, but some of these themes, like the default Pegasus one, just look straight up broken without any artwork. There are third party scrapers that will scrape the internet for album artwork for you, but this is something that could be built into EmuDeck in the future. Even the default Retroid launcher does the album artwork for you without even asking. Now let's talk about how well it does the one job that you would install it for, the, the one thing that it needs to do, and that's launch the games. And that's about a 
I should note that this is in alpha, but also Emudeck warns you that you're gonna need to load each individual emulator that it installed before you start trying to load your games from them, which is pretty normal for the Emudeck setup. This is because Dolphin and Aether made me configure controls. Aether and Yuzu made me direct the BIOS and the product keys. But pretty much every app requires you to accept some permissions. It downloaded the MMJR2 version of Dolphin, which is the one that runs good on the Retroid Pocket 4 Pro. I remember it running a little better than it did here, but it only really hiccups when loading into a melee level. GBA games didn't load until I installed the MGBA core in Retroarch specifically. GPSP did not work for me, but eventually Game Boy Advance worked great. Game Boy, Genesis, and NES all worked good. Dreamcast also worked good. It's worth noting that during the setup, I selected to not include bezels in my UI, but it enabled them anyway for some systems. That, that's just alpha stuff, it's not a big deal. Clicking on a PS2 game just loaded Aether and required me to click the game again for some reason. DS wants the Drastic emulator to run. Emudeck did not seem to install Drastic on here, so I just downloaded it myself. And then it does the same thing that PlayStation 2 does where clicking a DS game will just load Drastic and make you select the game again. Just seems like another bug there. N64 just didn't work at all. I'm not sure what core or what emulator they're looking for, so I couldn't figure that out. Switch says that there's no bootable game present and just doesn't open. When I opened it outside of the launcher, it ran worse than I remember. So I downloaded the Yuzu early build and that runs just a little bit better. Now Pegasus loads Yuzu, but I still have to repick the game that I wanna play. Sometimes the early or beta or, or nightly build of some of these emulators are gonna run better on some devices than the stable build would, but I understand why you wouldn't wanna just include those by default. Most people are gonna want the most stable builds of all of these emulators, but it would be nice if a future version of Emudeck has a little checkbox that asks if you want the most up-to-date nightly version of some of these emulators. But it's not that important because, I, like I said, I just, replace the Yuzu version that I had with the nightly version and everything just worked fine. If you're wondering why we're not talking about performance specifically in this video, like we usually do, that's because we already reviewed the Retroid Pocket 4 Pro. This is more about how Emudeck works as a front end. Everything should perform all the same on here, assuming that it puts the right emulators on here. Now this was Still pretty easy to do, so I decided to try it on one other device, the Logitech G Cloud. I really don't mind the G Cloud launcher, the one that it comes with, but having something that sets up all of your emulators for you would make recommending a G Cloud as an emulation device a lot easier. I was expecting less problems with the Logitech G Cloud, but to be honest, I had pretty similar problems. I mean, everything transferred over just fine. This time, I decided to click on every single RetroArch core. But after that, I had similar problems. DS wouldn't load, N64 wouldn't load. My Dreamcast still has bezels for some reason. Also, the biggest problem on here was that Pegasus, the launcher, just, just wouldn't install. What the hell? What the hell? I tried the installation three different times. I thought it was because I ran out of storage on here, but that wasn't the case. So I just downloaded Pegasus myself and installed it myself, and that seemed to work just fine. In fact, I didn't even have to set it up. I think it was already set up from the Emudeck installer. It also came with this much nicer theme. They, they, they should include this one with Emudeck. I'm at the very least happy that this got me to break out my Logitech G Cloud again. I forgot how much I like this thing. It just feels really nice. It just feels really good. Even in this broken alpha state, Emudex still streamlined the setup process. If you don't like Pegasus as a launcher, you can just use a different launcher. If you don't like any of the individual emulators that Emudex installed for you, you can just replace those for ones that you like. It just makes the setup process a lot faster. And if you know what you're doing, you can tweak some things and get to where you wanna be a lot faster than you could have if you had to download each individual thing. It kind of reminds me in a lot of ways of the initial Retroid setup. The launcher doesn't always point to the right apps. It doesn't always download the best versions of the apps. The difference here is that I'm confident that Emudeck will fix these issues pretty rapidly. 
They've come a long way with the Steam Deck and Windows builds. Not every Android handheld even needs something like Emu Deck. Anbernix come with stuff on there already. Retroid doesn't need it, but something like the Odin comes to mind. The launcher that the Odin comes with is fine, but it doesn't come with any emulation apps. This will just download all of them for you. And again, you don't have to use Pegasus. You can just use something else like the Odin launcher or Daiji Show or, or anything really. This will definitely be a tool for me going forward with Android devices that I have to review that don't have games on there already. Stuff that I have to set up. This will streamline the process, definitely. I've already laid out a couple of things in here that I would like to see fixed pretty soon, but it would also be nice if in the future there is like an advanced mode or something with even more options. Where to set up the ROMs folder, options for which emulators to download, which games load and what emulators, all that stuff could just be little checkboxes. But for now, again, even in this broken alpha state, I still think it's an extremely useful tool for streamlining the setup process. If you have a friend that wants to get into emulation, you can now hesitate less to offer your help knowing the setup process just got a lot easier for you. Before I end the video and before the sun goes down and makes this room completely dark, I wanna give a little update on the Retroid Pocket 4 Pro. In that video, I talked about how the R2 button wasn't analog. Something was broken with it and I talked to support and they said they would send me a new R2 button because it's the whole back piece. It seems like that was a known issue that they had. Once I posted the video, they reached out to me and they said, hey, the R2 button actually isn't broken. It's the tester that we shipped with the device that's broken. And I said, that doesn't make any goddamn sense because the whole reason I knew it was broken was because of Dolphin. I was playing Smash Bros. Melee and I noticed that it wasn't working. And it made me look into it more and we had more of a back and forth. And it turns out there's something weird about the programming with the control configuration. The Dolphin that it came with set up the controls by default and it set up the R2 button wrong. So you have to manually set up your controls for a lot of different apps, Yuzu included. And the gamepad tester that it comes with did the same thing that Dolphin did. There's just something weird about the code of it. So. There wasn't anything physically wrong with my R2 button. I didn't even do the repair. They sent me the, the R2 button and I just didn't even put it in because everything's fine. You just have to map the controls yourself. It's just weird. It's just a weird thing. Anyway, what do you guys think about Emu Deck finally coming to Android? Does this make the setup process easier for you or are you still just gonna set up everything yourself manually? Leave it in the comments below, at me on Twitter and any and all of this other social media garbage. Thank you, Rocket Money, for sponsoring this video. Don't forget to check them out at the link in the description. Save yourself a hundred bucks on your Verizon bill like I did. And of course, the most important thing that you can do to help support this channel, subscribe right here, share this video with a friend, a friend who is trying to get into emulation. Yeah, you can do this on a phone too if they've got an Android phone. Thank you very much. Have yourself a good week.